everyone, welcome to my channel. This is Amy. Today I'm going to show you another hand painted design on a rock. I have handwritten the word love in and I am going to be using my Posca paint pen to write over the, the words or what I actually drew on. I just did this by freehand. Of course, you can always You know, copy from uh, your computer, do some transferring with chalk or charcoal or writing pe uh, pencil. I'm using a uh, white coal charcoal pen and then I'm just going to go over it with this Posca marker. I need to actually probably get it started a little bit better. Yeah, I'll just take my time with it. So I want the lines to be a little bit finer than what I did on my last stone that I had a word written on it. And then go from there with it painting the design. Alright, so I went over it with my pen. And it's a little runny for whatever reason. I'm going to, I gave it some drying time and I'm going to go over it again here in a little bit. But I'm going to go ahead and paint my design on the stone. All right, I am using a two flat brushes, a number zero and a number four. And then I'm also using a round brush, which is a zero. These are all a magic paint brushes. And then a dotting stylus, which you can tell. I see some people with these awesome videos and everything's all nice and clean, but it's like, I use my stuff all the time. All right, paint I'm using is folk art paint using tea berry, forest moss, not putting that back, uh, thicket, wicker white, and school bus yellow. So hopefully you got all that down. I do have affiliate links listed below my video if you want to purchase these items, you can purchase from those. That's up to you. Alright, so what I'm going to do, get started first of all with my main blooms. And on here I didn't really position my paint probably in the best manner. But I'm just dipping each side of the brush into the paint and doing a blending stroke. If you find as you're painting, because you continue to add paint to your brush, just wipe it off on a paper towel or something and continue on loading your brush and painting your design. All right, let's get started. Now, many of you may not realize this if you're new to my channel, but I actually paint my designs on paper before I put them on my item. Get that filled in there. This rock actually has some, some imperfections on it, but it's okay. So, with that being said, sometimes I have to make some adjustments to the size of my design or the amount of petals that I'm putting on, the amount of blooms I'm putting on, leaves, etc. So I just wanted to, to mention that, that they're not always the same, but sometimes you have to make some adjustments. Now on this one, I am going to kind of do my petals a little different part of them. We're going to have the light paint on the outer at the top. And some of them are going to have it at the bottom. You know what, I'm going to go over this one again. I am a lefty, so whatever direction I go with my paint and my brush, you might find yourself needing to go the opposite direction. That's just how it goes with being different, you know, using different hands. which means that if I'm going from right to left, then you might find it more comfortable than for you to be able to create a better design going the opposite direction. Well, this I have to be careful because I don't want my bloom to completely cover up my L. So I'm just gonna tap in here and just kind of, cause I am going back over it, so I'm just gonna tap in around it and complete my design that way. 
And actually what I could do just to make it make more sense, bring the design further up into the petal above it. And go in there like that. And I can wiggle. Wiggle and tap. It just depends on what the surface is and how you're able to create it as you're creating. And actually on this one, I think I'm going to go back over this one. Let's get it like that. Make it look a little bit better. All right, so then on the ones beside it, I am going to actually come in here because it's, it's fine to have it kind of go over over the edge. Doesn't have to be perfect. And it makes it more interesting if it just freely just kind of freely hugs the rock. And for some reason this stone is kind of giving me some fits with doing my, my typical wiggling on it. Not sure why. I know that they're all kind of different, but and that's fine. So basically with this I can put my brush down and just kind of wiggle and just keep wiggling like you would typically do on like doing a one stroke kind of stroke. But part of it I might have to just kind of pick it up and go like that. All right, and then what I'm going to do, swing it around down here, and I am intentionally going over the flower that was painted first. I like to overlap them. Definitely like to overlap, because when you're making a floral arrangement, they're not going to all just be perfect, right? Definitely are not. And you can lighten it up. You want to come back in here. Just take your brush and go around the edge. I just want to make sure too that I fill in all these little spots. See, pretty flowers. I'm going to come over here with the darker on top. Just kind of wiggle it. If you like this video, then make sure you give me a big thumbs up. If you're new to my channel, please understand that my designs are meant to be easy and something that anybody can create. They don't have to be difficult in order to be fun. They don't have to be difficult in order to be pretty. And I'm just like so going over it, trying to put a little bit more of the darkness in here. So much fun. Now I get my stones at a local, I guess it's kind of more like a landscaping place that has all kinds of, all kinds of stones. I mean all kinds of, you know, bricks and stuff like that to do patios and porches, that kind of thing with. So I was happy to find somebody local the main reason is the, the person I was using that I got it offline, they ended up taking a break. I don't know why, what happened, but then I couldn't get the stones, the quality of stones that I liked. But it's also pretty pricey when you're trying to order them online. When you add in the shipping and you add in all that kind of stuff, it just gets really, really pricey. So I was happy. They do it by pound. So that makes it a little bit nicer too. I can go put a bunch of stones in my car and then all I have to pay is just pay it by weight. 
Alright, so now I'm going in here and just doing some little buds. And again, I'm just trying to make sure I have good coverage. But that's so important no matter what I'm painting on, is that my paint is covering. It's uh, opaque as much as I want it to be. And I don't have to worry about it. I'm going to put a little bud down here too. Sorry, I'm trying to make sure I stay on stay on camera as I'm painting. And I'm going to come over here and throw in a few more over this direction. I've, oops, or maybe even just one more. I don't know, maybe I'll make it a bigger one. I just like even numbers when I'm dealing with my painting. Okay. So now I've done that, and this is what we've got so far. Alright, so now what I'm going to do is come in here and start doing some green. Okay, so I'm going to take my little brush, put it in my greens, and I'm going to dip a little bit of it into the school bus yellow. And I will just keep doing this the whole time. This, this brush is so little that as far as having a true division of, you know, when you're loading it, probably not going to happen too much, so I'm probably just going to be sticking it in and out of the paint and then going from there with it. Right now I'm going to do a little stem, and I'm going to do it like that. Come here, and I can make my stem kind of go under here, under the words. Perfect. I don't think that I'm going to put any wiggle leaves on here, but I might. I think it's going to be more just pulling. But I am going to put some different colors in. Try to lighten up. Do some different shades of green. I kind of pulled in some white. Because whenever you do that, it, to me it just gives it more interest if you add a little bit more in you know, just different colors. And since it's wet on wet, you're going to pull, very possibly pull some color from what's below what you're painting on. Because these flowers are still wet. And then you can just do some simple, simple, simple leaves. We're not going to do anything difficult. Might even want to add a little bit of white in here. And I don't like them with a definite line in them. I like them kind of more intermixed. That. That. Okay, then I'm going to go over here. A lot of times, even if I do my, my little sample paper, I might end up adding to it or changing it a little bit. Just gives me inspiration and then as I'm doing it, I can make changes to my design. And that's fine. Okay, so I'm going to do this. I pulled a little red in there. Well, not red, but the uh, tea berry. I'm going to just pull little stems. I don't think I did any stems over there yet, which that's fine. You can come back and add them in. You don't have, I mean, you don't have to make a big deal out of them. That's for sure. Now, if you want, you can just leave it just simply like this and put some centers in. But you know me. If you follow me, you know I don't, I don't go for small amount of leaves, sorry. Which to my point, if I'm doing more than what you would be happy with, then don't don't do as many. It's okay. It truly is. You've got to make my designs that I'm doing put your own little touch to them. Don't worry about making them exactly the way I'm doing it. I'm just sharing an idea. Just an idea. 
pure and simple. All right, so then I'm going to come back over here, add some more, just some, again, just some straight. It's real easy petals. Yeah, maybe just tip a little bit into the white. Accent it a little bit. Maybe, maybe not. I don't want to touch this on anything, so I'm sorry. I'm trying to show you, but I know it's hard to see. And you can switch these two where they're going different directions. They don't all have to be leaning this way or that way. And you're putting a little, this little. Because I am going to come back in here and put some other things in. Okay, so then I'm going to move over to my forest moss. I'm going to get some green. Or not green, add some white to it, excuse me. And then I am going to do some, I'm going to just bring out some little stems where I can maybe add some interest to it. And again, a lot of this is going to be just all over the stone. It's not necessarily going to be, you know, real prevalent. Be in different places. Just to, again, add some interest. Okay, let's maybe pull a little one out here. Alright, so you can do one of two things. I did a few of them over here. Again, I'm trying not to touch touch anything. You can do more of like your pull leaves where you just kind of pull it towards you or towards the stem. Like that. And you can just rotate it a little bit and get some different colors going on here with it. You don't even have to stick with green to be honest with you. You can do browns and maybe even like the yellow ochre, yellows. Go over the stem again if you want. Because as it dries, when you're doing a st working on a stone, some of the color can suck into the stone. So sometimes you might have one that you think, oh, this is great. And then once you come back and look at it, I think, oh, what happened to my color? that has gone sucked into the stone. So putting on your paint a little heavier or knowing that you might have to come back and add to it, just you know keep that in mind. You can also do, you don't have to do the ones strictly where you're pulling to. You can do more where you go away from the stem and just do you know variation and just pull it like that. wasn't good. Don't always have to do it like me. <laughs> it's like, please don't always do it like me. So I'm not always right. All right, so let's come over here and do it like that. I'm going to put a little bit more white in this. And you can even, let me wipe this off a little bit, even do, you know, some little pulls coming out from it. You can do that even with a um, marker if you want. You don't have to do just all brush paint. Either you can intermix, add some detail to your your painting with that. Okay, I think on these I'm going to do some like that. Okay, like that. Very interesting. Let's see where you got a little pock marks. You just may have to go over those. 
whether it's with the green or even adding another shade of green into it, that's fine too. Coming down here, and it just kind of gives it a little bit darker green on there. Sorry about that, Bill. I'm baking some bottles. Even adding them just in white with a touch of green is fun too. And I'll tell you, once you get doing this, you'll find your your the feel for it and how you want to create it with anything that you're doing. You know, just because somebody does it a certain way and you end up not doing it a certain way doesn't mean it's wrong or right. I really get upset when I hear people say, well, you didn't do that right. Well, I'm doing it the way I want to do it, right? Okay. All right. So right now, this is what we have so far, and we have our love written in there. I am going to take my stylus, and I'm going to start dotting in some yellow for the center, so I'm not using my dear foot stippler. I am just going to go like this. Very simple. Add in color to the center. You can just use one color, which is what I'm going to be using. I don't want to use any, you know, more than one color. Again, I'm trying very hard not to touch my design as I'm rolling my stone around. All right, so I did that. Turn it around to the smaller side and I'm going to just come in here into my little, my little uh, kind of buds or whatever you want to call them and just tap in some dots. Then I am going to come back here, actually I forgot one other part, what you can do, take your little round brush and just kind of come in here maybe add some of these just quick little pull flowers you know where you're just doing quick little swipes with your brush you don't have to do too many I mean just do a few here and there it just kind of gives you you know, you're not just doing one flower, because a lot of my designs are just with one flower, and I know that. I mean, I realize, but a lot of times I'm just trying to teach you how to do one style of flower in particular. I don't want a bunch of flowers in my design, or a bunch of different styles of flowers, I should say. But I'm just going on this one, I'm going to put some here and there. come up in here, maybe add some more, and I will go back over my love. And when you're doing this with this brush, this round brush, you can just, you know, just freely put, put in the, the design. You don't have to, you know, do too specific of a, of a shape or whatnot. It's just random, just very light random. Again, I like to work in threes or odd numbers, so so be it. All right, I'm going to stop with that. Then I'm going to take my stylus. I'm going to come in here and just put a dot into some of these. Like I said, you can take more time on these if you want. I just think they're kind of like filler flowers, so I'm not too concerned about can see what I'm doing. The stone kind of rolls down a little bit. All right, so come up here and just stick just, you know, very lightly, very easily, simply. Okay, so I have those. And then what I can do too, you know, if I want, is to come through and just add some dots here and there throughout my design and just randomly place them 
You can even put some on the petals themselves, like the flower petals. I think on this one I'm just going to randomly dot down the side. You can see that. And come in here. You can leave the dots on. If you don't like them, then don't put them on. I just happen to like dots, and I think they give them some interest. But I feel you. If you don't like them, then it's okay. Say so dots aren't for everybody. Doing some over here. Now what I do is I do bake these stones. I will give this stone probably a, a little bit of drying time because I've already baked for today. Uh, it might even be a few days before I bake anymore. So I'll give it some time to dry and then I'm going to bake it. Once I'm done baking it, I do spray the Mod Podge Ultra on them. Now if you wanted to put these outside, you might have to go to something a little bit more, um, you know, stronger, not more stronger, but stronger uh, to be able to, uh, uh, you know, endure the weather. But I'm just thinking people are going to use these in their houses and that type of thing. So, you know, if they choose to put them outside, they can do that. All right, and I am going to go back over my love with my marker. I see I have paint on me, so I'm hoping I did not stick my fingers in it. All right, hope you like this. If you do, make sure you give me a big thumbs up. New to my channel, please subscribe, hit that notification bell. Before you leave, share this video on all of your social network with your family and friends. Just hit that share button underneath the video, and it's easy to share. And until the next time, please stay safe and healthy. I do appreciate you, and you have a good one. Thank you.